it's Amanda from Loops and Love Crochet and today I'm going to show you a video tutorial on how to work up the jelly bean cowl. So this crochet pattern is free on the blog loopsandlovecrochet.com and this video tutorial is meant to go along with the written pattern so I'll show you how to work up some of the stitches and then you can find all of the written instructions on the blog for the different sizes that this crochet pattern comes in. Uh, this one here is a child size and then I have an adult size as well and then in the written pattern you'll also find instructions for a teen size as well. And this pattern also matches very well with our jelly beanie pattern um, which includes a beanie as well as a messy bun beanie. So you can check out that pattern on the blog as well as a video tutorial for those ones on my YouTube channel as well. So the jelly bean cowl uh, is worked up from the bottom to the top and the texture is given with uh, post stitches as well as puff stitches here and you can work it all up in one color or combine two different colors either way it looks great and uh, this is a neck warmer style of cowl which means it's a little bit snugger closer to the neck than some other cowls um, however there are instructions in the written pattern on to on how to make it um, different sizes as well. If you want to make it taller or if you want to make it wider, you'll find instructions on modifying the pattern so you get the size of cowl that you prefer. So let's grab our yarn and our hook and we'll get started. Okay, so to start this pattern here, um, I'm going to be working in foundation double crochet stitches. As an alternative, you can also work a starting chain um, and then work double crochet stitches into, into those chain stitches. Um, I prefer to work in the foundation double crochet because I can do the chain and the first row of, single, of double crochet at the same time, as well as I like the finished edge that the foundation gives, um, but it'll work the same either way in the chain with double crochet stitches or the foundation double crochet. Uh, to start my foundation double crochet, I'm gonna start with a chain of two then I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook into the farthest chain from my hook, so the one right next to my slip knot. And I'm going to pull up a loop. So now there's three loops on my hook. Now I'm going to yarn over and pull through just one of those loops. And then I'm going to complete kind of like a normal double crochet here. So I'll yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So that's my first foundation double crochet stitch. So now I'm going to do that again, working into um, right beside my slip knot here, the top of my foundation stitch. There's kind of a little, a little V at the top here. So I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch. So you can see underneath both of the loops there. Again, I'm going to pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one of those loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So when we pull through one loop, that's what's creating our chain. And then when we pull through two loops, that's what's creating our double crochet. So we're working both the chain and the double crochet at the same time. So again, here is our little V at the top. We're gonna insert our hook right underneath. Pull up a loop. And now we're gonna yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So there's our first few foundation double crochet stitches. And then you'll have to look at the written pattern depending on the size of cowl that you're making or if you're modifying the pattern to make it larger or smaller, um, your foundation double crochet number will change depending on the size that you're working. Um, but I'm just going to continue along just like this with my foundation crochet stitches. And if you're choosing to work the chain with the double crochet stitches into it, um, there's instructions in the pattern on doing that as well. So once you're finished your foundation, it'll look like this. So we have the chain at the bottom and then we have our double crochet stitches. So I'm just going to continue along working my foundation double crochet and then we'll meet back and I'll show you the next part. Okay, so now when you are finished your foundation double crochet um, or your starting chain with the double crochet stitches, um, always measure it and compare it with the gauge in the pattern. 
um, just to make sure that your cowl is turning out to be the right size that you'd like it to be. Um, once you work the rounds of the rest of the cowl into your uh, starting foundation, it does grow by a couple of inches. Um, so just check where the instructions are that shows what the size should be when you have your foundation finished. So next you're going to join this foundation double crochet into a circle. So then we're going to start working in the round instead of in rows. So to do that, keeping the right side of your project facing towards you and without twisting any of this chain here, we're going to join to the first foundation double crochet stitch um, with a slip stitch here. And make sure that your yarn is on the outside, you don't pin it into the center. And I'm going to insert my hook underneath the loops of my first stitch here. And then I'm just going to make a slip stitch. So there we go. So now I've joined it and we have a little bit of a gap here at the bottom. Um, you can go ahead and use this yarn tail and yarn needle to sew it together now. Um, I usually sew it together a little bit later once I have a few more rounds worked up. So from here, we're going to work on creating the ribbing effect here um, by using front post and back post double crochet stitches. So to do that, I'm going to start with a chain two. And then I'm going to work my double crochet stitches. Um, they're the same as regular double crochet stitches, except for instead of working in the top of each stitch, we're going to work around the post of our stitches here. So I'm going to yarn over. And my first double crochet stitch here, I'm going to insert my hook uh, underneath. I'm going to create a front post double crochet stitch. So I'm going to go from the front around the back of my stitch and back to the front of my project here. And that's where I'm going to complete my yarn over. So I'm going to pull up a loop. And now I'm going to complete the rest of my double crochet as usual. So yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So there's my front post double crochet and now we're going to be alternating with front post double crochet and back post double crochet. So my next one is going to go from behind my project. So I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to come behind my next double crochet stitch and I'm going to insert my hook towards the front and then back towards the back again and I'm going to yarn over behind my project pulling that loop all the way back to where I started. Now there's the three loops on my hook I'm going to yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So you can see my front post double crochet is on the front of the project and then my back post double crochet is on the back of the project here. So now we're back to another front post double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook up from the front of my project around the post of my double crochet, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two loops on my hook. And there's my other front post double crochet. So now I'm going to do another back post double crochet. So yarn over, going from behind my project, insert my hook towards the front and then back towards the back again, just traveling around that double crochet stitch, pulling up a loop, and then completing my double crochet, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over, pull through two loops again. So I've created my first front post, back post, double crochet, front post, double crochet, back post, double crochet, and then I'm going to continue alternating those front post double crochet stitches and back post double crochet stitches all the way around this project here. So I'm going to continue that all the way around and then we'll meet back and I'll show you the next part. And then you'll just complete your last foundation double crochet and then you're going to join to the top of the first double crochet with a slip stitch. So right on top of our first front post double crochet. There's my slip stitch there and I haven't joined that bottom part together yet but when you do you can just sew that, sew that right together. And there we go. So now we're ready to start our next round. Now, depending on the size of the cowl that you're making, um, you might be repeating a couple more rounds of the front post and back post double crochet stitches to create a longer ribbing. 
So that looks like this here. You can see there's more rows of the ribbing here, making it longer at the top and the bottom. Um, whereas for this size, I'm just working another child size pattern here. So I'm just gonna do the one. However, if you were doing more rows, you would just chain two, and then you would work front post double crochet stitches in each of the front post double crochet stitches, and then you'd work back post double crochet stitches around each of the back post double crochets. So you're just gonna match them all the way around, and then you'll continue on to the next round. And for this child size, we're gonna work single crochet stitches next. So after my join, I'm just gonna chain one, and we're just gonna work single crochet stitches in the top of each stitch around. So I'm starting in the same stitch as my join and chain one, and just regular single crochet stitches the full way around and trying to keep an even tension as you are working as well. Um, if you're working your single crochet stitches too tightly here, your ribbing that we're making with the foundation or the front post and back post stitches won't be able to stretch as much to go around a person's head if the single crochet is worked very tightly. So just kind of be mindful of keeping a consistent tension and not crocheting too tightly. And we're just going to continue around all the way like that. So just single crochet in every stitch. Okay, so almost finished my round of single crochet stitches. So now we're ready to change color to our accent color if you're using one um, to start working on the puff stitches. So my second last single crochet. Now my last one to work the color change, I'm gonna insert my hook into the last stitch and I'm gonna pull up a loop like I normally would for a single crochet. Now I'm gonna drop my first color here and then I'm gonna pick up my second color and I'm going to yarn over or put the yarn onto my hook and I'm gonna pull through the last part of my single crochet using the new color. So that's my color change there and I'm just gonna pull the other yarn tail down. And then we're gonna join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet stitch. And pull that nice and tight. And you can pull your little ends nice and tight as well. And then we're gonna start working on our puff stitches. Now, as we're working, I'm gonna work over my yarn tail of the new color change. However, I'm not gonna work over my first color here because I'm gonna need to pull that back up when I need it for uh, future rounds here. I'm not gonna cut and rejoin it every time because the ends are just going to be inside of the cowl and not noticeable at all. So it'll save you some ends to weave in if you just pull up that other color as you need it. But I'm going to work over top of this little yarn tail here. Okay, so I'm gonna chain two and then I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the first stitch, pull up a loop, and I'm gonna do that a total of four times. So that was the first time. I'm gonna yarn over again, insert my hook into the same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over again, insert my hook into the same stitch, pull up a loop, so that was three times. And then I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook into the same stitch and pull up a loop. So now there's all these loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through all of those loops on my hook to complete the puff stitch and then close it with a chain one. So now we're gonna work the next one. We're gonna skip the next stitch and work a puff stitch in the following. So yarn over, insert my hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, so that's one. Yarn over, insert my hook into the stitch again, that's two. Yarn over, insert my hook into the stitch for a third time. And then the last time, yarn over, insert my hook into the stitch for the fourth time. Have all these loops on my hook again. Yarn over, pull through all of those loops on my hook, and then chain one to close it. So there we go. And I'm just working over this yarn tail here and holding it to the back of my project. So we're gonna keep going with the puff stitches all the way around, skipping stitches in between. 
all the way around to the last stitch. So I'll show you a couple more. So there's another puff stitch. Skip the next stitch, puff stitch in the following. So one, two, three, four, and then pull through all of the loops and chain one. So we're gonna keep doing that the full way around. And I'll meet you back on the other end and I'll show you how to finish the end of that round and then start the next round of puff stitches. So there's our five puff stitches there. Just need to complete the chain one on the last one. So there we go, so there's our five puff stitches. So we're just gonna continue around just like that. Okay, so I'm just finishing up the last puff stitch of the round here. So I'm just closing my puff stitch with the chain one at the end, and then I'm gonna to join to the top of this first stitch here, right in front of the first puff stitch, underneath both loops here, and I'm gonna join with a slip stitch. Now I'm not gonna chain two here. Um, in order to offset our puff stitches, you can see how the puff stitches fall in between for the second round. We're going to offset and work into the spaces between each of the puff stitches here. So I'm gonna slip stitch over into the top of, right on top of the first puff stitch. I'm gonna slip stitch there. And then I'm gonna work another slip stitch into this first puff stitch space. All right, so from here, I'm gonna chain two and then I'm gonna continue working my puff stitches into the spaces between each of the puff stitches here. So one, two, three, four, and there we are. Yarn over, pull through chain one, so we're working the puff stitch in the puff stitch space. So now I'm going to move right to the next puff stitch space here, which is created with the chains. Just need a little bit more yarn here. There we are, so it's kind of staggering the puff stitches in between the other puff stitches. So there we go, so there's the first few puff stitches here. So we're gonna continue around just like that, all the way around to this other side, and our last puff stitch is gonna go right into the space after the last puff stitch before the chain of the starting of the round here. So we're gonna keep working all the way around and then I'll meet you back over here for the last puff stitch. Okay, so I'm just finishing the last puff stitch here. So we have our two rounds of puff stitches and I'm gonna change back to the first color that I'm using here. So I've worked my puff stitch. I just pulled through all those loops. And then instead of chaining one with the with the color I'm using, I'm gonna chain one with the other color. So I'm just picking it up from the inside of my project here and then just chaining one with it. And then I'm gonna use that yarn to join to the first stitch here. So right in front of the first puff stitch, we're gonna join right there. And I'm gonna pull that nice and tight. I'm gonna pull that other yarn nice and tight there too. There we go. So now we're gonna work our next round, which is just a round of single crochet stitches. And we're gonna work in each stitch around, um, in including in between each of the puff stitches. So I'm gonna do a chain one here. My first single crochet is gonna go in the same stitch that I'm working in. And then the next one's gonna go right on top of the first puff stitch. And then the next one's gonna go right in front of the next puff stitch uh, just inside of the stitch here. So we're not going to work in the chain 
space, we're gonna actually gonna work in the stitch here underneath both of the loops. And just all the way around. So just like that. All right, so here we are back around at the last single crochet stitch. And I just want to show you that the last single crochet stitch of the round is worked in between the last puff stitch and the chain or the slip stitch at the end of the round. So there's kind of a space there right where our chain one was after the last puff stitch. I'm gonna work that single crochet stitch in there. And then we're gonna join with a slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet of the round. And next our round is going to be front post single crochet stitches. So that is this round right here where the stitches are on the front part of the project. And to work those, we're just gonna work a regular single crochet stitch, but instead it's gonna go around the post of the previous single crochet stitches instead of in the top of the stitch. So I'm gonna chain one. And my first single crochet, I'm gonna wrap my, or put my crochet hook into the first uh, space there. Wrap it around the post of my first single crochet stitch. And that's where I'm gonna do my yarn over and pull up a loop. And now I have two loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through those two loops. So there's my first front post single crochet stitch. So again, I'll go into the space in front of the stitch, wrap around the stitch and back out. And then I'm gonna complete my single crochet stitch from there. So we're gonna continue around just like that. And I'll show you the first few front post single crochet stitches. So here they are, they sit right in the front of our single crochet stitches from the previous round. So we can see here we have our loops from this front post single crochet round and then on behind we can see our, our stitches from the previous round of single crochet stitches right here. So it's not adding any more height to the project here, we're just working on the front part of it. So I'm going to continue those around and then I'll show you the next part. Okay, so here's our round of front post single crochet stitches, and I'm just working the very last one. So the last front post single crochet is going to be squeezed right in after or around the last single crochet stitch of the round. And sometimes it's a little bit tight to get into here. It's going to go right around that last stitch. And we need to make sure we work our stitches around all of the stitches of the round just to make sure our stitch count stays the same uh, because if our stitch count becomes off, our puff stitches might not work out because they require an even number of stitches. As well, you don't want your project changing size as you work it up too if you're missing stitches. Okay, so now we're going to join to the first front post single crochet of the round. So right here in the front of our project, here's the first front post single crochet of the round. So I'm gonna join there with a slip stitch. I'm gonna pull that one nice and tight. And then we're gonna join back to the previous round of single crochet so that we can continue working the height of our cowl and not working on the front of our project. So we're gonna flip, I'm gonna flip this upwards and you'll be able to see, we can see our last row of single crochet stitches and directly behind this slip stitch, you can see the slip stitch of the previous round of single crochet before when we started that one. So we have all of our V's going sideways here and then we have this one loop here and that's our slip stitch from the previous round. So we're going to go right in beside that slip stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch back to that round and pull it nice and tight. And then my next round of stitches are going to be worked into the round of single crochet that was behind the front post single crochet. So from here I'm going to chain one and I'm gonna work one single crochet stitch in each of these stitches around here. And as you can see, we are not working into the post stitches, we're working behind those post stitches because we wanna keep those post stitches on the front of our project providing the extra detail and texture look. So we're just working one single crochet stitch into each stitch around. So there you go, you can see what that looks like there. We have our post stitches in the front 
and our single crochet right here on top. So we're going to continue those all the way around and then we're going to go back to another round of puff stitches. So here's our round of single crochet stitches here. I just have the one last single crochet to work with our color change. So I'm going to insert my hook into the last stitch of the round, pull up my loop like I'm working my single crochet, and I'm going to drop the first color, pick up the other color that's joined inside of my project here, and I'm going to yarn over and pull through with that second color to complete the color change. And then now from here I'm going to slip stitch to the first stitch of the round, and I'm just going to pull my other yarn nice and tight underneath too. So from here, we're going to chain two and we're going to work our puff stitches again. And these rounds are just going to be repeating rounds that we already did. So we're going to work our puff stitches in every other stitch around. And then we got our second row of puff stitches. And then after that, we have our row of single crochet. So we're just basically repeating three of the rounds that we already did. Puff stitches, puff stitches, single crochet. And then after that, we have our ribbing here at the top. So I'm going to continue and work those next rounds, and then I'll meet you back up at the top, and then we'll finish the top part together. Okay, so I finished working the last two rounds of those puff stitches, as well as the round of single crochet stitches, and then I went ahead and worked just one double crochet stitch into the top of each of those single crochet stitches. So now all that's left here is the last round of front post and back post double crochet stitches, and that's to create the ribbing at the top of the project so it matches the bottom. And we did this at the start of our video tutorial as well. I have my chain two and I'm just going to work starting with a front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet. So we're just going to alternate those all the way around exactly how we did at the start of the cowl. And if you're following a different size of the cowl pattern, um, you may have to work more rounds of the front post and back post double crochet stitches to add more height to the ribbing. Um, but in this size that I'm making, it just has the one round of front post, back post double crochet stitches. So I'm gonna finish working this round here and then we're going to be all done. Okay, so now I have finished that last round of front post and back post double crochet stitches and our child size cowl is now complete. I hope you found this video tutorial helpful. I hope you enjoy working up this crochet pattern. And again, this video tutorial was meant to go with the written pattern on the blog with the different sizes available as well. And this tutorial just shows you how to work up the different stitches and you can apply it to whichever size of jelly bean cowl that you are working up. Um, I'd love it if you subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow Loops and Love Crochet on Facebook and on Instagram, as well as check out our free crochet patterns on the blog, loopsandlovecrochet.com. Thanks for watching.